We will flock to Chicago to occupy during the concurrent NATO and G8 summits. We will set up tents, barricades, kitchens, and peacefully occupy Chicago for one month. Adbusters has put out a call for 50,000 people to come to Chicago to occupy. Join us on May 1st. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. With us tonight are two of the security experts who briefed business leaders last night, and they are Arnett Heinz, Chief Executive Officer of Hillard Heinz. That's a security consulting firm co-founded by Mr. Heinz and former Chicago Police Superintendent Terry Hillard. And Jeffrey Kramer, Managing Director of the Chicago Office of Kroll's Business Intelligence and Investigations, which also offers security consulting. Gentlemen, welcome to Chicago tonight. Thanks so much. Arnett Heinz, you were the moderator of that briefing to uh, business owners and managers uh, yesterday, and you were accompanied by representatives from the police department, from the Secret Service, from the FBI. And the message to uh, the, the business community was keep calm, go about your business, but at the same time, your organization put out this pamphlet or gave them this pamphlet, which uh, advises them on many different uh, issues that I've mentioned already, which is, sounds disconcerting, like having a safe room, having evacuation plans, uh, having uh, monitoring uh, social media for, for emergencies. Are there two different messages, or is it disconcerting no, no. to to the business community I, to be I, hearing I think, this? I think the way you introduced it, Eddie, is a little offset. We, we we weren't preparing for war. We were giving information on what are best practices to prepare for a marvelous event that's coming to our city, and to consider security preparations if you haven't. And so the list that we provided are measures that organizations can consider on advancing best practices on on their security perimeter on 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 strengthening the security post on ensuring that their visitors and employees wear credentials to the business um, and and the full range of emergency preparedness steps one of the messages we gave last night was there are many businesses in this room that will not need to do a single issue here some issue, some businesses may need to address a multitude of them in each category. So it was a very good uh, program to share information. We we reached out to Frank DeBetadetto, our special agent in charge of the Secret Service, uh, Superintendent McCarthy, the FBI agent in charge, Rob Gant, and uh, Gary Schinkel, and they hosted a marvelous event. Jeffrey Kramer, can life go on as usual during that uh, that preceding week or perhaps preceding two weeks if there are tens of thousands of protesters and they they take over Chicago. Well, I don't think they're going to take over Chicago and life is certainly going to go on. If you have to get to work, you're going to go to work. If you have a dentist appointment, you're going to go to that dentist appointment. I think what you want to be aware of and what we see in talking with our clients, if you're a high profile corporate citizen of Chicago, you're going to take certain measures. Now, some of those measures have probably already been in place because they're just good sense, but you're going to be more attuned to it now with these protesters coming in. So I think people are going to be aware or should be aware of where the protesters may be, um, depending where they're going to be allowed to, to protest at a given time, and just be aware of your surroundings when you're going certainly into the loop or other areas where things may happen. Now, Arnett Heinz, uh, you, uh, in your long list of impressive uh, credentials, you were once with the Secret Service, uh, and, and your company, Jeffrey, is a, is a global uh, enterprise. Uh, from what you have learned from past NATO and G8 summits, is there, are there things that were done there that apply to here that, will, uh, that, that can be implemented to try to avert any kind of disruption Absol or violence? Absolutely. Superintendent MacArthur last night gave a great um, an analysis of um, how to deal with the demonstrators. And, you know, when you look at the issues that Seattle confronted, immediately following the next major collection of, of demonstrators in our nation's capital, Chief Ramsey dealt with that in a different fashion, much more effective. And I will tell you, in the last 10 years, our, our law enforcement leaders across the nation have learned those lessons and are bringing them to bear in today's Jeffrey Turner, yes, what's your, your biggest concern about uh, preparedness for any potential uh, disruption or violence uh, with the G8 and well, NATO I, summits? I think you do see a lot of it, because that point's well taken. I think law enforcement has learned over the last 10 years. The corollary of that is the protesters have also. I think you're going to see more social media now than obviously exists in Seattle. Twitter, the YouTube uh, uh, feed that you just showed, that didn't exist, obviously, uh, 10, 12 years ago. So I think you're going to see more 
people here yeah, just as a function of is is Chicago's an easier place to get into than Seattle. Is, it, is social media uh, going to pose a bigger uh, problem or challenge for law enforcement and for security officials uh, because they can coordinate so quickly now? It's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. It's certainly easier for the protesters to determine where they're going to be at a given time. However, the flip side of that is we see with working with our clients, they're able also to monitor the websites, the YouTube videos, et cetera, who might be coming to Chicago. So it's a two-way street. That information is public, and just like it, information can get to demonstrators, law enforcement is capable of monitoring that same communication. So they'll be able to stay abreast and stay on top of it. Do you favor doing what San Francisco recently did and shutting down or at least limiting communications uh, within the city should things get out of hand, uh, whether it's cell phone uh, usage or, or Twitter uh, usage? No, and you saw the problems that happened in San Francisco and Oakland and, and certainly in Berkeley. I don't, think that's, I don't think that's planned for here. I don't think it's, it's advisable by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, both of you are advising or, or on the, already on the payroll of some of the big companies here in terms of security measures. Is that right. correct? Correct. Right. And, but you cannot reveal, of course, who your clients right, right. are. But what about the smaller businesses who can't afford security experts such as yourself? What sorts of preparations should they be making? Well, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I know for a fact that there will be communications to smaller business. I've been in discussions where there is going to be some organized information sharing for these smaller businesses and even the opportunity to have officials visit and give recommendations if, if business owners are concerned. And this has been a growing issue being driven in our city. We still have plenty of time to prepare for that and deal with that. And I think our city's plan is starting to unfold now as we, as we get closer to the event. We saw that ominous video m maybe posted by the hacker group Anonymous, maybe not. We don't know who, who that was. They're calling for at least 50,000 protesters to come to Chicago. Is there any way that intelligence can know in advance how many protesters and what their intentions are? It's certainly not to that degree, although Anonymous did take responsibility for the recent uh, uh, cyber attack on, on the CIA. But, but who knows? But can they ascertain? Uh, to even an approximation? No, I don't think so. Is there more that the city can do to try to make it accommodating for the protesters to avert any kind of clashes or, dem or, or, or violence? You know, Eddie, we were talking earlier, and th the day I arrived in the city in 1999, one of the first messages I heard from our police leadership then when Superintendent Hillard was uh, 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 running our police department, they always were attentive to protesters' right to assemble and, 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 sp and speak their, their voice in a lawful manner. And they always insisted on accommodations that were fair and reasonable. And I guarantee you that will happen in this case. You believe that uh, Mayor Emanuel and Police Chief McCarthy will be uh, providing the kind of access that uh, protesters might demand or want, or well, at least they proximity not, to the events? And they might not give it to the degree the protesters want. The protesters would like to be right in front of the Chancellor of Germany. They're not going to get that opportunity. It's a, it's a balancing act. They have to give them the right to protest, but they also have to make sure that the meetings go on and the people to get to where they need to go. And they will set it up within safe zones of transportation routes, of event sites, and um, all of the arrangements that need to be made for, from a security perspective, demonstration zones are designated based on those, those elements. Now, two, two downtown uh, universities, Roosevelt uh, University and Columbia College, have already rescheduled some events that they had for this time. Uh, Columbia College has rescheduled its graduation ceremony. Uh, Roosevelt University is uh, moving some of its classes. Do you recommend that other businesses, if they can, do anything to try to stay out of this area for uh, the few days surrounding the event? Well, in those situations, those were a lot of people going to one area that could be accommodated. So, you know, arguably that makes sense. That's a smart decision. Well, what about, uh, you know, people visiting downtown or uh, workers downtown? Anything else? The that, city's uh, going to be open. Come visit. And, you know, it's, we're, again, we're still a long way out. And, and, and let's see how the city plans and prepares and the communication that will come. And, but I can promise you, it will be come and see and visit and, and enjoy yourself. Do, do you guys as security experts have any insights yet on where the, what the city plans to do in terms of boundaries and uh, closing off streets yet? I don't think those decisions have been made. And, and the city's very, in the city with their federal partners, will be very careful about closing streets. They will only close streets that are within a particular zone. Everything else will be attempted to remain open and, and temporary halt when motorcades are having to move forth. What about protests that, that pop up uh, 
perhaps you know just anywhere outside of these perimeters. Well, that, that's, again, that's I think that's likely to happen because if they're not comfortable with where they're being allowed to protest, they're going to pop up somewhere. Um, where the, perhaps law enforcement doesn't expect them in a given moment. I think what you're also going to see, which you did not see in prior G8 and NATO uh, conferences, are the cyber attacks. Um, we have former FBI agents who work in the cyber area, and we're seeing more and more of that with the more high-profile uh, corporations, And you're obviously. also advising your clients uh, about cyber attacks and monitoring social media, isn't a that right? Absolutely. What, what are you advising them to do? Well, for monitoring, there's a lot of corporations that are public in nature that already know some of the groups that target them. And if you go on, you can find some of the people that maybe are saying we should go to a certain company at a certain time, and you know they're out there. So you're monitoring them. It goes back to what we were talking about before with information out there really serves both purposes, the protesters and law enforcement. And those are the issues that our, our, both of our firms can help clients with is how to understand that issue about monitoring social media and best steps to, to gather. So. Arnett Heinz and Jeffrey Kramer, I'm sure we'll be talking to you again uh, before and perhaps during uh, the NATO uh, uh, summits. Thank you very much yeah, for being here you. tonight. Chris Crydell is next with the week's top business news, so stay with us.